Bob McAllister is the host of Wonderama. He's a guy I've gotten to know pretty well, as you get to know your co-workers well. And I thought maybe we'd chat with him a little bit about what's happening in his life and to the life of Wonderama. We have a good welcome for a really a friend of all children, Bob McAllister. Well, welcome, Bob. Thank you very much. Talking with these women about people getting fired. Yes. You just got canned. That's true. That's true. After 25 years. 25 years of Wonderama. Yeah. Uh, Bob Williams writes it up in the post today, so it is. the word is out. Um, how come? I don't know. You I, know. I really just heard it through the grapevine here at the station. Well, I really don't know either. I, uh, uh, we finished taping Thursday, and they said that uh, Metro Media has decided to drop it. It's the end of an era. And uh, that's the end of the show. Well, look, it, it happened to Jack Parr. It happened to Arthur Godfrey. There you go. Other, other greats <laughs> have gone off the air. What do, do you, you know, and I can imagine in my own life. Now, I've only been interviewing people for five years. So I'm right. into the routine of a five-year thing. I'll be three years here in January. It's hard for me to imagine if I were to be terminated exactly what I would do. Although I'd be busy. Oh, I'll what be are you busy. Gonna do? What are you going to do? Well, I'm so busy, I can't tell you. I mean, we, we just got back. I got back last night uh, from Washington. Uh, from entertaining about uh, uh, five or six thousand children at, uh, for Women's American Art, and uh, we drove back last night into the wee hours. And uh, this weekend we'll be at Westchester Premier Theater. And uh, what now? What do you do when you go to Westchester Premier Theater? It's I mean, almost uh, it's a Sonny wonderful show. Sunny there. All I've right. seen Frank Sinatra, Gladys yeah. Knight. What does Bob McAllister do there? Has an absolutely wonderful time with children. I I have a a, a group of people that goes with me. And we just uh, entertain kids of all ages. I have uh, magicians and jugglers, and uh, uh, there's ventriloquism, and there's magic, and uh, there's everything. Just to delight. It's a clean, wonderful, happy show for children. That's well, I knew it would be clean. And, uh, you haven't done that much X-rated stuff on Wonder Woman. Well, no, years. no. I'm very proud of it. We've had people that. like uh, Richard Rogers, Robert Merrill, yeah. Edward Villella. It just goes on and on and on. Jacques Cousteau, uh, uh, just... Uh, Do you feel hurt? Do you feel wounded by oh, this? You must. Well, know. it's yeah, it's been a wonderful relationship here. I've, uh, um, I I'm, I'm very hurt to see it go off, and I think, uh, I think the public deserves uh, good children's shows, and I think Wonderama has been the best uh, since, since Sandy Becker started it uh, 25 years ago. It's always been uh, the very highest caliber. How have, and, uh, no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was just curious whether or not you have perceived over the course of the time you've been doing this, which has not been the whole 25 years. You've been doing what? Well, I've been, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I've started out in a little UHF station 25 years ago. Doing children's shows? Doing show. children's shows. I've always done children's shows. And uh, because I love children. They say, don't you want to do anything else? I want to relate to children. That's, yeah. uh, that's all I've ever done. And... Uh, I enjoy it. It's a, it's a great thrill to walk out. And, and this weekend we played the standing room only in Washington. That's great. And uh, You know what I need to point out, though, lest people are starting to get upset about this to, uh, a little bit uh, more than they should. Wonderama is not going off the air immediately. It's going to be in reruns Well, they'll for, go into reruns, while, right? which is a shame. It's just going out of production. It's yeah, they're, the they're trying to phase it out uh, slowly, and it's a shame. But uh, we'll see what happens. I'm very positive. Because, uh, you seem positive. Yeah, I am. And it has been a good relationship. With, it has. It's been very nice. And they've always, uh, uh, you know, given me the right tools to work with. And this year, I've had the uh, absolutely the best staff in the world. You yeah, can't You've got it. a good team there. Oh, a real good team. they're wonderful. And you, look at the show. You can see. I've, I've, I, it, it's perplexing because I, I don't understand it. Well, it must have something to do with budgets and stuff like that. I, I really don't know. You I know, don't either. I mean, the, no one tells me either. <laughs> it's I, a surprise to me. I uh, was curious as to whether or not over 25 years with kids, yeah. you've seen a change in kids. Now, we're going to take a break. Think about that for okay. a second. We'll have a commercial. Right. Have you seen what it takes to make them laugh? Has that changed? Think about that. We'll be sure. back right after this okay. with Bob McAllister. Be right back. In 25 years of working with children, have they changed in terms of what it takes to make them laugh and entertain them and intrigue them? No, I think children have always laughed at the same things. Um, I think there's an enormous need, though, for, for children's entertainment because uh, for live entertainment, where do you take children today? In New York City, where do you take them? You take them maybe to the magic show, to Annie, right, to things good. like this. And uh, there's an enormous need to expose children to the right thing. Uh, 
in television, they should be exposed to the right thing. It, it, it shouldn't be used as a babysitter. And I think uh, maybe a lot of parents are guilty of turning on the and set. And putting the say, kid down. There you are. Yeah. Um, I think there should be selective viewing. And I think the parents uh, should say, you're allowed to watch this show or are allowed to watch that show. And uh, that's it. There should be a scheduling. And I think it's, uh, it's imperative that... Uh, the parents say, okay, you know, we're, we're going to monitor what you watch. How do you do Very that with important. your own children? Like, for example, here on the cover of your new uh, Christmas album, A Family Christmas, <laughs> we could get... It's kind get of funny. A, That'll be a, our last show. Here's a live child here, a Bob McAllister product. Fill it down. Yeah, tilt it down. Get a good look there, at that. There she is. What don't is you... Is that have... a beautiful family? No, huh? and that's the actual <laughs> McAllister fire. Oh, thank you. What's the... I'm trying to come in on this. Uh, what don't you let her watch on TV? And how uh, old is your daughter? Then? My daughter, Molly Jo, is, is three years old, and I have a 14-year-old, and I have a 19-year-old, and Ralph is there, the wonder dog. Ralph the wonder <laughs> dog, wearing a special cape. Yes, he smiles. He's got a little smile there. He needs to see an orthodontist real bad. But uh, uh, my wife is very particular. Uh, on the shows that she lets uh, Molly watch, and uh, we're very, very careful. What and, kind, for example? Well, she watches uh, Sesame Street and Electric Company, Mr. Rogers, and uh, I think uh, Bob Keish and Captain Kangaroo does some he fine, does, fine. He does, he does, does things, wonderful yeah. things. And uh, uh, some of the things in the evening we, we allow her to watch. The Muppets is absolutely her favorite, and they're, yeah. they're mine, too. I yeah, think I like it's a Muppets. wonderful, wonderful Did the Muppets ever do uh, Wonderama? Yeah, Jimmy's done our show several times, yeah. and uh, I'm in love with him. He's just a great, great man. Which is your favorite Muppet of the Muppets? Do you have one that... Uh... Well, I think Kermit is probably Kermit my the favorite. Frog, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's just a, just a jewel. Very sensitive uh. frog. You know, <laughs> well, Jim a nice is a very sensitive man. Yeah. And uh, his whole family is. There's were you a ventriloquist when you were a little boy? Did yeah. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you how I got started. It's kind of interesting. I don't think I've ever shared this. Uh, when I was 18 years old, Dave Garraway was on the air. Yeah. And I wanted to get in television so bad. And I had graduated from high school. And he used to come from the exhibition hall on uh, 49th Street, I think it is. And I got up one... I was on, yeah. in New York on vacation. And I got up. And I stood in front of the exhibition hall with a ventriloquist dummy that had a bow tie. Now, this is for the old timers that remember the Today Show. And J. Fred Muggs used to be on it. And uh, Garraway always used to say, peace. Yeah. And so I stood there with a the dummy in front of the window and put the, propped the dummy's hand up against the window. And uh, Garraway and I had a sign around the dummy that said, peace. And he invited us in. And they arranged an audition for Ted Max Amateur Hour, which was enormous at that time. Oh, it was sure. on Saturday night, and I was uh, a two-time winner on that, a one-time loser, and uh, uh, it was that was my start in, in show business. Well, listen, actually. before so you... I was the first, uh, one of the first people that was ever on the Today Show. Before you leave, at some <laughs> point, if, if you could, I'm sure you got some great funny outtakes and things from Wonderama, if we could maybe do another thing sometime and show some of your favorite moments. Oh, I would I've like got to some do that. gems. Over 25 years, yeah. I've collected quite if a few great ones. we could pull together great some, ones. we could really have some nice things. Yeah, we will. Okay. I promise. But I, promise. I did, really, I, we, you know, we knew it was in the paper today, and uh, we thought it would be good just to have you on with us. Well, thank you. And, and you, I obviously, thank, uh, you know, all the, the, you know, the millions of people that have, uh, have, have watched it, because they're the... You know, I have a they're my friends. People are going to be showing up to see Wonderama for the next two years. <laughs> but the oh tickets, my. it's the toughest ticket in town. Well, it, that's another shame. It's, yeah. it's, uh, people have been writing and writing and writing, and they just, uh, there's, there's never room. Well, but maybe they'll see it at the Westchester Premier Theater this weekend. Listen, we are out Kipsy of time. On Friday. We'll be Poughkeepsie there. on Friday? Poughkeepsie on Friday, Westchester Premier the Saturday man's busy, and Sunday. Don't worry about him. He's going to be okay. Uh, <laughs> Tomorrow on our show, we have a discussion of... Thank you, Bill. Obesity, you're welcome, Bob. And we also have Jules Pfeiffer. Tonight, I'm giving a big party at Sybil's you're to celebrate all invited. Thanks. No, wait, hold on. No, you're not all invited. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, we are going to have, uh, we don't have room for everybody. But what, what we will do is, 
We'll show you some pictures uh, from the party tomorrow, and then Hill de la Madrid will give you a full report on Wednesday. It's going to be at Sybil's tonight at 9 o'clock. Biggest party I've ever thrown since. I invited my entire high school graduating class to my house, and my father thought only 30 people were coming. Uh-oh. 402 people showed up, and my father didn't talk to me for three months. I can't understand that. It's the biggest party I've thrown since then, 1960. <laughs> I will see you tomorrow at 1130. Have and a good at nine. We'll afternoon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.